Hello and good morning. This morning I'm going to show you how to use Excel to find limits. I'm going to focus on this function here. The function is x to the n minus 1 divided by x to the m minus 1, where n and m are integers. Now let's first consider this function at x equal 1. All right, when x is 1, no matter what n or m are, it's 1 minus 1, which is 0, over 1 minus 1, which is 0. So it's undefined. 0 over 0 It's called an undefined function. So we want to consider the limit of this function as x approaches 1. We want to look at how it, as it approaches 1 from below, increasing values of x toward 1, or above, decreasing values of x toward 1. All right? And how does the limit, it, even though it's undefined at 1, does have a limit, as we'll see. How does the limit depend on what value of n and m are in the function? All right. So let's create an array of x values from one, from zero to one, zero to two. All right, which encompasses x equal one. Now I'm going to start at zero, and I'm I'm, I'm going to make it, it increment by one. So my second one will be equal to the previous one plus the increment. All right. And I'm going to make that increment fixed. So by hitting F4, you now it's dollar sign B, dollar sign 4. So it's always going to refer back to that. So if I copy this formula, I'll always be looking at the previous one and adding 0.01. All right? So you can see I got 0.01. All right? So let's take this formula. We can either copy it down like this. All right? Alternatively, we can do this little trick that I learned recently. Just no, you can't do that. You have to copy it down. I'm sorry. I'll show you the trick. All right, so let's copy it down the traditional way. All right, now uh, we don't know where we are, so uh, we're at 0 0.8. All right, so we have to keep going. So let's keep copying. There is another way to do it, but uh, the nice thing about doing it this way is you can change the increment. Oh, we're at 4. All right. So let's go to, to the to where we are at two. All right, we didn't want to go that far. Let's go to two. Well, we'll keep them all. All right, but this was our last one. All right, maybe we'll just uh, make it yellow. So, yeah. all right. Now let's take the function and let's put the function in. Now watch how I do this. So I want the function, and it's a ratio. I'm going to put it's the value of x raised to the n power, which is that cell, right? Now I want that cell to be fixed, so I'm going to hit F4, so now it's dollar sign, all right? Minus 1, close parentheses, and divide it by the value of x raised to the m power, let's fix that with an f4, minus 1, close parentheses. All right? Does that look right? Yeah, we've got the function. a7 is x, the first value of x raised to the b. You can see it's in red. That's that one. b2, minus 1, a7 raised to b3, which is that one. And we get a value of 1, all right? Now, as I mentioned before, we can either copy this down. That's one way. We seem to always get close to 1, all right? Or we can do this. Just click on there. Well, let's get rid of these. And let's just, we got the function there. And just, there we go. Okay. Okay, so let's go down to the point where we have 1 and see if it's undefined, all right? I'm a little confused as to why this is not always 1, but hmm, very strange, all right? Here I, I don't have an undefined function. Let's see why. 
No, I have an undefined function. It's one to the n minus one divided by. Okay, now it's possible this is not exactly one. So I'm going to put a one in here. I'm going to enter one. It should be undefined. It is, all right? But it's not doing what it should do. I don't know why. Although it seems right. Okay, let's take a look at my integers. Anyway, the limit is something wrong. Oh, there's one and four. Let me put one and one. Let me put one and one to start with, all right? Okay, okay. When it's one and one, all right, okay. I, I should, I didn't realize I had one and four. I thought I had one and one. So it was correct for one and four, but I didn't, I, I was getting ahead of myself. So let's go down to x equal one. Is everybody with me? I hope. All right. And it says division by zero, which means it's undefined. Now, to get the limit, I'm going to say it's equal to the limit as it's approaching from above, from below, right? And I want to take the average of the two limits. Plus the limit as it's approaching it the other way, divided by two. All right? So the limit is one, all right? And again, that's in cell 107, all right? 1007, all right? 1007. So let's uh, be clear that what I've done, all right? So the limit equals, and what did I say? Cell C. 1,007. I think that's what it was. And it's 1. All right? My limit is 1. Let's uh, highlight this. That's my limit. All right? All right. Now, it's it's helpful to create a graph of the x and y values. So let me highlight the two columns. I'm going to go all the way down, even though I went past two. Okay, this is my array that I'm going to graph. I'm going to make a scatter plot. I, I don't always do it with an increment, but I want you to show you, you can change the increment just to see what happens. Sorry, this is taking so long. I'm going all the way to four. 4.06, all right? So I've, I've highlighted the two columns, the X and the Y, that I want to, so now I insert, scatter plot. And you can see, let's move this over. Everybody understands the problem. We're looking at the function F of X, F of X equal X to the N minus one, and X to the N minus one. And we want to see how that, the limit of this function depends on N and N. But let's, there's our graph. And actually, there's a missing point at 1. But you can see the limit as it approaches at, from below and above is 1, all right? So let's make our values 1 and 2, all right? Let's see what happens when we, here's our limit, 1, all right? By the way, let, let's change the increment. Let, let's make it 0.01, okay? All right? <laughs> okay, now it's, of course, it's going a much bigger, all right? Let's make it point 0.1, just, just to show you. Okay, well, okay. So let's keep it as point 0.001. All right? Okay, so I'm going to make this 2 and see what happens to the limit. So I put a 2 in here. Again, the function is x to the 2 minus 1 
divided by x to the 1 minus 1. It's still undefined at 1, right? Okay, so 2. And you notice when I put a 2 in here, the limit is 2, all right? Can you see? It, it, it approaches 2 both ways. Now let's put a 3 in here, 3 and 1. Oh, it's 3 now, all right? Now it's hard to see because the scale is a little different, but it's, it's 3, right? Now let's put a 3 and a 2. 3 and a 2. Oh, 3 and a 2, it's 1.5, all right? And you can see it's 1.5, all right? And uh, let's put a, a 2 and a 3. And then, by the way, 3 over 2 is 1.5. Let's put a 2 and a 3. And I put 2, of course, it's 1, right? 2 over 2 is 1. But let's put a 2 and a 3. <laughs> you can see how the function changes, all right? By the way, here we have f of x versus x. And let's put our axes in. And we have x here, We're plotting f of x. F of x, I did something wrong here. Okay, you can, okay. So let's, uh, so far, every time we've gotten as the limit, the ratio of the two n values, the integer values, there, all right? Let, let me put a four and a two, all right? Now, a four and a three, four thirds. See if we get four thirds. Well, isn't four thirds 1.33333? All right. Let's put five thirds, five and a three. And we do get five thirds. Isn't five thirds? It's one and two thirds, isn't it? One and two thirds. All right. So um, it looks as though the limit. limit of f of x as x approaches 1 of x to the n minus 1 divided by x to the m minus 1 will always equal n over m. All right? Can we try just a couple more to make sure? We've got 5 and 3. Let's do 5 and 10. Well, 5 and 10 is 1 half, right? And we got 0.5, all right? Let's see what the graph looks like. Okay. But again, it's one half. And I think this is so cool. I really do. I know math just gets me so excited, all right? So you can do this with any function, all right? So to review, I did it by putting a, an, an, an inter, inter, increment of 0.001, all right? So uh, there's another way to make the increment 0.001. Let me show you how to do that. Let me say that the first value is 0, and the second value, I'm going to make it 0.001. OK? So I, I've got a pattern, 0 and 0.001. You can see, no, that's not good. I'm not following that pattern, 0. I don't know why I should follow that pattern. I think I'll have to, let me get rid of all the values and redo it. Okay, so I've established a pattern, 0, 0 0.001, let's see. No. Okay. Zero point oh oh one. I guess because I okay now it's working. See, I'm getting a repeat of that pattern. I can just do this. I'm only going to go up to two. All right. 
Oops, I'm past two. I mean, I could go. I'm gonna go all the way down. I hope you all understand what I'm doing. Okay. So again, I, I establish a pattern 0 0.001. No, I, I'm not going to use the increment. I thought that was a nice idea, but I hope it didn't add to confusion. So I, I established the it pattern 0 0.001, and then I just copied it, all right? And then I put in my function, OK? And Oops, sorry about that. Now I want to go down to one. Because at one, when x is one, it should be undefined. Let's make sure it is. When you do this pattern to get your array, sometimes your your integer values, your one might be it might be not exactly one. All right, and you can see it's not, all right. So I'm going to put equals one, all right? And now I get division by zero, all right? And again, over here, it's, it's this, this cell here uh, where I have my limit, all right, one. And here I put the average, all right, of the value before and after, all right? Another thing you can do is you could change this to 0.9999, a little bit closer to 1, 0.9999, and this 1.0001, 1.0001, a little closer to 1, all right? Anyway, when you take the average of the two, you get 0.5. So we're at n values of 5 and 10, all right? So let's see if it still works. Let's try 1 and 10, and we get 0.1, all right? Okay? And let's try 1 and 7. Well, 1 7 is 0.14285, all right? So our graph is different depending on the values of M and N. Okay? So to summarize, we have programmed Excel to find the limit for the function x to the n minus 1 divided by x to the m minus 1, where m and n are integers. And we've shown that in every case we've done, we haven't shown for every case, we, that would take forever, all right? For every case we've done, the ratio of n to m is the limit, all right? So if n is 5 and m is 10, it's 5 tenths, or 1 half, all right? So whatever we put in for n and m, if n is 5 and m is 10, we get 0.5, all right? And we also get the curve of the function. And just remember, because you have this value 0 here, Excel, when it sees something undefined, it automatically makes it 0. But it isn't 0. It's undefined. Undefined means undefined. It doesn't have a value of 0. 0 over 0 is not 0. But this function does have a limit when x is, approaches 1, all right? And it's the same limit whether it approaches 1 from above or below, all right? If you get infinitely close to x equal 1, the value is 0.5 for this function, all right? So let's go 10 and 15. <laughs> well, 10 and 15 is 1 third, right? Uh, 5 and 15, I'm sorry, it's 1 third. So it works every time it's worked so far. Okay. Okay. So th thank you for your attention. And uh, maybe I'll come back to this another time. Showing mathematically using calculus why the limit of this function is n over m. Okay. Thank you.